So just before we carry on looking at the amazing new features in Vectorwiz 2025, I just wanted to reach out to you and offer my teaching and training services that I offer all over the world via Zoom. I'm an experienced architect with over 20 years experience, but I've been a Vectorwiz user my entire career, and I really love teaching people from small practices to individuals, whatever level you currently are. I can help you on 2D, 3D, BIM, or various visualization workflows. I also really love teaching Vectorwitz in combination with things like Twinmotion, Enscape, and D5 Render for 3D visualization. So wherever you are in the world, if you'd like to reach out and improve your Vectorwitz skills, please book a call or drop me an email and I'll be very, very pleased to help. I look forward to hearing from you soon. We're gonna start with uh, the obvious one to start with, number one for the text tool. Number one is the keyboard shortcut for the text tool. So let's click, type in a word, bedroom, but I'd like to spell it a little bit wrong, please. All right, so we all make typos or spelling mistakes, don't we? So if you right click, you should find down at the bottom check spelling. So we can check our spelling. By the way, if nothing was selected, okay, if we go to the text menu and go to check spelling, instead of checking the selected item, it will select the entire document, all the pages, all the design layers everywhere. Absolutely the lot. Um, so this is a good one to do before you issue drawings and it will kind of like change. Can you see it's picking up all those spelling mistakes sorted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second thing I'd like to say about text is style. Okay, now, this is quite important because it points to much, much bigger, bigger picture items in Vectorwit. So I always cover this at the beginning. So now we're going to do the same thing again. Click number one. That's our text tool. Now we're going to actually pay attention to the mode bar, which we didn't before. And up here, you can see there's a little couple of options here. Angled text, straight text, fine. But there's one, most importantly, called text style. So let's drop down to new. All right, and this will allow us to create a brand new text style. So let's call this uh, room names. Let's say I'm gonna use trebuchet, so I'll type in TRE, and it will kind of filter to trebuchet for me. Let's make it a bit bigger, so it's 18 point, let's bold. And because it's a room name, it's gonna sit in the center of my room. So I want the alignment to be centered. You can see it's nice because it's typing from the and what you will notice now, if you look at the text, is over in the object info on the right side is something called textile. Ah, suddenly you notice it. Right, so you can change that textile to a different textile if you wanted, and it will change the font and the size of text. Right, so now let's, let's look at the benefit of textile. So to do this then, we need to introduce another panel, Command-R. Command R is this one here, it's resources. It's a very important part of that to it. It's the resource manager, it's called Command R. And the very first time you bring this up, guys, it might not look like mine. So let, let's just do this together. So what I'd like you to do is, is make the size, make it size appropriate. It's no good having it too small, it doesn't work. It's gotta be quite large. And in an ideal world, you just really want to have it large enough so that you can actually see all of the buttons and the search dialog. The second thing you can do is fiddle around with these panels. Okay, so you can see there's these little panels that might be hidden that you can kind of resize. So that's fairly optimum. So preview here, data here, and then a big panel in the middle. Yep, so now let's learn to shut it down and bring it back up again on demand. Command R, Command R. Perfect. There is a little thing that you can do as an alternative. Some people prefer it, I, I personally don't, is to have it kind of um, minimize. So what happens is it minimizes and then it only opens when you go onto it. I find that a bit annoying. Um, some people prefer it if they park it up there, but then I forget it's there. <laughs> so my preference would be to use Command R to bring it up when you need it, grab something and then put it away again. And when you've got two screens, of course, you pop it on that other screen. So you've got it there all the time. Good. So let's click on the home, little home button, and that will take you to the um, file you are currently in here, Untitled. So what you should see is some 
resources in there. You know, go to all resources and you'll see everything in that file. But of course, you can filter it to specific items again within that file. So look, if I if I'm in a more complicated drawing, you know, here here's here's one of these other projects in the background. You know, look at all the resources. There's billions of things in there. So if I filter it to line types, suddenly I just see the line types. You know, if I if I go down to images, I'll just see the images. Okay, now the most useful thing is to drag and drop to use it to apply. So what you can do is you can drag and drop a, a style onto something else. All right, so I'm dragging room names down and you see it applies that room name style. Have a go with that. If you've got more than one thing, I recommend you select them first and then you can right click apply or you can just double click. The most important thing, if we've bothered to set a style up like we would in InDesign, if we're doing a great big design report, we'd set up some textiles, wouldn't we, for body text and figure text and chapter headings, that kind of thing. If you're writing a book, you wouldn't, you would do that. Same in Vectorworks, you just set up textiles at the beginning of a project, job done. The most important thing is you right click, you can click edit. So that takes you back into the editing dialog. Uh, so now I can choose a totally different font. I right, just try and choose something that you'll see is very different. And most importantly, I could change the size. And let's talk about changing the color. All we do is we click onto the text color. But then we need to go, instead of just having an active document with no colors in, we need to click on the manager and go to manage color palettes. So then it brings up this rather lovely dialogue with, which you can make a bit bigger, with all our wonderful color palettes in. I'd recommend the Benjamin Moore, a nice, you know, Designer classics or historical colors, nice. The Farambola are obvious one, tip those. And obviously architects love using RAL colors. Right, so look, now we've selected the colors. Let's see, this is easy. We simply go back and click now, and now we can just drop down. We've already loaded in Farambola, so there they are. By the way, the other palettes are still available. I, I prefer to manage them and just have them permanently there. And then finally, the, the, the final little trick is just go to your list view. So it's very clear what the color is. You know, grid view or list view. And once you get familiar with certain colors, like I know that 14 is my Barrington blue there. Can you see? So I can search for specific colors. And the most important thing is I've I've edited the style. So that is a global change through my 30 sheets of Vectorworks that I've set up. So the lesson here is if you take a few moments longer at the beginning of a project, when you're starting to set things up, to set things up properly with style, you can do hatch styles, line styles, wall styles, windows and door styles. You can do any style. If you set those up, then it makes it a dream to edit the project later. And on your next project, you can make the drawing look similar to the last project, consistency. Within a team, you can all be consistent. Quite an important lesson, I think, for every practice. If you if you were to put it into your template and, set, and resave the template, it would already be there. Mm. Okay, if I fire up a brand new document, of course, in, in this document, I haven't got any textiles or styles of anything. However, at least if I had another drawing with those styles in, I can simply right click and click import. So I can just easily import them from another document. But even, even better if they're just already in the template. In an ideal world, if you do command down, what you really should be doing is pulling in an actual drawing template. I'll just show you mine very briefly. So, you know, what a drawing template consists of is some some sheet layers with some title blocks on, you know, ready to ready to make drawings. And, and in my file, I've already pre-named them all because most planning applications have the similar type of drawing. Yes, I might tweak the names, but I've also got, um, you know, within that file, I've got some different paper sizes. It's quite nice in Vectorwitch, you can just have lots of different paper sizes as required. All right, so that's the sheet layers with some title blocks. But then I've also got some standard design layers. So design layers are essentially multiple model spaces. So in Vectorworks, we have a design layer, which is a model space at a scale, but you can have an unlimited number of these model spaces. 
So ground floor, first floor, second floor. So in Vectorworks, you really don't need to reference that much because you could easily have all the projects for the drawing in one file if you wanted. I've, I've done huge projects all in one file before. Obviously, if you're working as a team, there's different strategies. So we'll need to talk about those. But the most important thing is each design layer is its own set of goodies. And what you can see is I also have a layer called graphic standards. And within that layer, I used to do textiles like this, actually, previously, before they introduced textiles, I used to just have them there. And then what I would do is, you know, I would use the my eyedropper tool to match. That's what I used to do, but I don't need to do that now because I've already got textiles in there. You can basically just create those new textiles um, from, from the dialogue and put them in the template. But you can also standardize lots of other things like, you know, little graphics and things like that. Sorry, I've got a couple of different layers with, with some detailing, depending on what I'm doing, you know, maybe some scale bars, that kind of thing. And then, of course, the final element of a vector which drawing is the classes. So I can either click on there to show you the classes. If I double click any of these little icons, it will open up a much bigger dialogue, which is easier when you're kind of learning, I would say. So when you're, when you're navigating around your file, this is why it's called the navigation palette, because I can literally navigate with this panel by double clicking and navigating around my drawing, very efficient. But I can also create and edit content there. But when you're learning, it's useful to double click sometimes those icons and, and look at the big dialogue because everything is very, very clear here. So these are the design layers once again. There's my sheet layers, all the drawings. Um, obviously I've got, I haven't got any viewports as yet. Um, classes in Vectorworks, so this is important for you to understand. Classes in Vectorworks are really the equivalent to AutoCAD layers. So I always explain it like this. Layers are where something is in Vectorworks, ground floor, first floor, second floor, roof plan. A layer is where. Class is classification of what something is. It's window, wall, door. Because classes will exist across all layers, like vertically. So you only need one door class in a 20-story building. If you turn off doors, they'll turn off in the whole project, right? Classes are shared across all the layers. The layer is really the layer you look at, the ground floor, the first floor, that kind of thing. And as I say, think of layers as model space in AutoCAD. And classes are layers in AutoCAD because in AutoCAD layers give things graphic attributes like line weights and colors. Everything you do with AutoCAD layers, you're going to be doing now with classes. And the Auto and and, and basically vector its layers are just sheets, model spaces in AutoCAD. You know, you, sometimes you may have a lighting layer. That's fine because if you're doing a lot of lighting, you have a lighting layer. But within a lighting layer, you still might need spotlights and point lights and pendant lights. You, you might have to divide it up with classes for different elements within that lighting layer, you know? And of course, in a 3D workflow, let me just see if I can open up just to explain this. All right, so it, in, in layer terms, you can see this project is quite simple. It has four or five layers. If I turn off the, the layers one by one, you can see I've just got the ground floor layer, which could be just purely a 2D plan. All right, so this is the very brilliant thing with Vectorworks. It's wonderful for 2D drafting, but to be honest, by the time you've learned to do 2D drafting in the right way, you've already got a 3D model. And then, you know, you just go and add, so for example, here I've got an electrical layer, and that's just a purely 2D, so it's not even 3D, it's just a 2D layer of information. And then if I click my 3D first floor, you can see it's a 3D layer. And there's my couple of roof layers. So I've just divided my model up into three-dimensional and two-dimensional layers. The advantage of working as a model is that when you go to your presentation, you can really coordinate all the drawings you need from that presentation. And the, the, the elevations and the sections and all those things just are derived from the model. It's just a, a really unbeatable approach. There is, maybe this is for the future to whet your appetite about how, how good this feature is. There is a command here called create interior elevation viewports. And if I just basically drop one of those into that room, it will generate all the drawings for me. And the brilliant thing is if you then amend the model, these will update, of course. these I can go and work in the elevation and delete that window 
I can even, it's quite cool. I can even resize sort of windows. Let's let's move that sofa back a bit. All right, so now, so now I've updated that elevation essentially in the model. And of course the drawing's updated, but if I go back to my model now, you'll see the sofa's moved and that window got deleted. If you're doing manual drafting, 2D drafting, everything is manually coordinated, as you well know. You've got to drop yeah. lines down. You've got to make the window the right size. If there's an error, you may, may or may not spot it. But this is, in a way, this is this is sort of just really, I'm not trying to train you on this today or even sort of convert you to this technique, but I, it is important for you to understand this is where architecture and interior design is, is going or been, I'd say, for many practices. Yeah. And it has many advantages in that uh, if I wanted to, I could do, you know, go through and, and cut a nice sort of section. Vectorworks is amazing for this. So uh, I can basically generate a coordinated section in a second or two, super quick. And I could then drag off another copy of that section. You can't beat the workflow. I could click reverse direction. I could even do perspective and I can click update. You know, you can get a really nice sort of set of coordinated drawings. Anyway, time for the future to get you excited. And I'd love to work with any practice. I do most of my time is spent doing exactly this.